Hi there, Dominic here with an introduction to Mono's Array tool. Found on the duplicate tab, you'll have Array. When you right click on it, you can choose Array, Instance Array, Replica Array, and Transform Array. So let me show you the Array tool. So I'm s I've selected it in the duplicate tab and click in the viewport. Now I already had some settings. I had set the count to 3 in X, 4 in Y and 3 in Z. But right now, oh I should, I'm going to drop the tool and control Z to undo. I should say I had this mesh selected which is this cube. So don't pay any attention to the others yet, just this cube. Item layer that is selected, so array click in the viewport and with these handles I can set the offset or you can do that manually over here over here I can set the count so right now I have 3 in X if I make it 4 you see it will get 4 in X 5 in X 4 in Y 3 in Y 2 in Y yeah, you get the idea not too complicated all of this for creating arrays. You can give it a jitter amount. I'm going to shift click a bit to sh so you see the jitter in X, jitter in Y, two, jitter in Z. So you get the idea, I'm going to set the jitter back to zero. You also can give it a scale, for instance, 2 in X, 0.5 in Y, etc. So, I want to set it all back to scale is 1. Okay, back, sorry about that. You have an option between. When you check that this happens, it says in the manual. Uh, between the between option when enabled will allow users to define a first position and a last position and the rest of the clones will be generated between the existing copies I have no uh, actually no real not really an idea of uh, how to use this but never have used it maybe you might at some point and please let me know what it's all about in the clone effector I can set it to replace source, to invert my polygons and to merge vertices. When this is checked I can specify a merge vertice distance. My source, this is also important. I can set it to active meshes and as I said earlier this cube was selected so now it's the cube which will be used for the array. But when I set it to a specific mesh then right now the mesh item is a cylinder now it's cylinder which is being used for the array but I can set it to every specific mesh that I want I can also set it to all background layers be careful with this option because if you have a lot of background layers so right now you see all of these items are being copied to each placement in the array so if you have a lot of items this can really be stressful on your system but this is a useful one I think random background will choose one of them so you see every array item gets a random background layer as you can see and you can set it to a preset shape as explained in previous videos if you press F6 and you go to your presets manager then you can choose a profile and that's useful for the preset shape but usually you're going to choose active meshes or a specific mesh or random background layers so this is the array tool in Modo. 
I'm going to control Z to undo. In the array, in the loop setup on the array, when you right click, you have also the option to instance array. So instead of actual geometry, it will create instances. Uh, I believe that with instances, yes, you also can choose hierarchy. So if you have a parent child relationship between item layers, then with hierarchy and the instance array, not only the parent will be arrayed, but also its children. So you have extra options for the instance array. The replica array will create replicas and the transform array. This is also an interesting one. Um, so as explained in the previous fit with the let me see the transform the curve transform tool you can also choose transform array but in order to make that work I first have to select in item mode a number of items you can select all of them in this example I'm going to not select this one then right click over here and choose uh, excuse me right click over here transform array so with that tool selected click to activate it in the viewport now as you see all the selected items not this one this was not selected all the selected items have been transformed so they have been given a new position and that position is determined by the array generator so I have one in X so I have one in X as you can see here 10 in Y and one in Z now I have 10 in Y but I only had selected nine items so only nine items will be transformed as you see here you have an array symbol that is not being uh, populated if I set the count for instance in Y to 5 then you see these are not being transformed because the other counts in X and Z are 1 so I'll only have 5 array elements and I have selected 9 items so an array of 5 elements can only be populated by 5 items but when I set for instance the count X to 2 now you see that I have 10 elements in my array, 2 times 5 is 10, but I had selected 9 items, so one array element will not get an item. When I set this to a lower amount, and for instance Z to 2, now you see that I have 3 elements in Y, 2 elements in X, and 2 elements in Z. This gives me uh, 12 array elements but I only have nine items selected so three array elements will not get populated I can interactively drag these sliders or I can drag and click and drag away from the these sliders to hull in the viewport I can set the other options manually here the offsets like so I can give it a jitter amount for instance jitter X jitter Y for instance like that I'm going to leave it at zero I can scale the items also and again we have this item in between which according to the manual uh, gives me an option to define a first and a last position but don't really know how to use this one but anyway as with the transform pen and the curve transform and the Bezier transform I have a transform array which lets me populate an array with selected items hope you find this useful and um, hope it wasn't too confusing all of this and bye for now this was Dominic